Over here in the Sapphire Distort category, you have a lot of different filters that, as you would probably guess, distort your picture. Um, but I want to start with Pan and Zoom here, S Pan and Zoom. Pan and Zoom is very similar to Avid Pan and Zoom. You would want to use this if you're going to be moving over, panning or zooming over any kind of image. Whenever you import images into Media Composer, it resizes those images to the project's raster size. So in this case, whenever I import a picture like this one in my timeline into this Avid project, this picture, regardless of its size, is going to get resized to 1920 by 1080. And um, I can resize it using like a 3D warp in my effect palette here, but if I zoom in on the picture, it's only going to pixelate because I'm zooming in on a 1920 by 1080 image. So that's where pan and zoom comes in. You want to use that so that we can pan and zoom over the original high resolution image. So it's still a good practice to cut your images into the timeline so that whenever you go to online, the online editor, just in case the pictures don't relink to the original files, knows which image is supposed to be in that filter. So I've started by cutting in some images into my sequence here. And then I created a background for our picture um, on the next layer. And this background can be created using uh, under the render category. We're going to talk to this uh, talk about this later. It's actually uh, clouds color smooth. Um, and then on video track three is where I will put my pan and zoom. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a couple edits here for each picture and grab a pan and zoom, drag it into video track three and then go into my effect editor and click on load file. All right, find my picture. There it is. It's a TIFF image. It's very big, as you can see, 72 megabytes. I'm gonna load that up. Now I've got my uh, I've got my record monitor resized here, but I'm gonna actually put it back to normal size so we can see the image a little bit clearer. And you have you can see on-screen controls, and I can use these on-screen controls to resize my picture, but the thing, I'll be honest, the thing I don't like about this is that it doesn't lock the scale of the picture. So I, I can do this and it, and it distorts it. And I can pull on the corners here to zoom in. But it's not locking the scale. If you look over here in the uh, effect editor, the X and Y scale parameters aren't the same. So I actually don't like using the on-screen controls. I feel like using the... Um, the controls in the effect editor are actually much more uh, much more accurate. So I'm going I'm going to uh, reset all parameter values here and get back to my full screen record monitor. Load up the file. All right, and let's start to do a little keyframing. Let's first start by zooming in on the picture. And let's make it let's zoom in pretty pretty high. Okay. And then now the one on-screen con control that you you could use that is actually a little bit more intuitive and that makes a lot of sense is is this one here so I can change the position of it. All right. And uh, let's just set all keyframes to all parameters. And I'll set an ending keyframe. And we can zoom way out. Just say 0.7. Okay. And um, we can rotate the image a little bit. You can swivel it, tilt it. These are all these are all things you can do with Sapphire Pan and Zoom that you cannot do with Avid Pan and Zoom. Now you notice our uh, our background here is black, so um, we we want to fix that. We want to have it be over the lovely background that I created. So under the Combine uh, drop down menu, change that to Over. 
Okay, so let's just first see how this looks. Okay, nice. Let's just move this keyframe up to make it go a little bit faster. And let's change our keyframe interpolation to spline. Okay. Now a couple other options that you have uh, with Sapphire Pan and Zoom that you do not have with Avid Pan and Zoom is uh, Drop Shadow and Vignette. So let's um, add a little vignette to our image here. I don't want to keyframe the vignette, so I'm actually going to delete these keyframes. So let's make a vignette. And we can change the uh, center of the vignette if you want to. All right. And you can play with the other parameters here for vignette. Um, we can also do a drop shadow. So again, I don't really want to keyframe these drop the drop shadow right now you might want to do that in your own work but um, you turn up the shadow opacity here and you can change the position if I were to keyframe anything I would probably keyframe the position of the uh, shadow so that it shifts with the movement but for now I'm not going to bother with it looks pretty good Another nice feature in the pan and zoom filter is the uh, fact that we have motion blur built in. Uh, this is not possible with Avid pan and zoom. Um, just turn on your motion blur here and you can play with your shutter angle and um, you know how intense you want the shutter and how intense you want the blur to look. But uh, here it is playing back in real time, almost real time. You can see how it's blurred, but you get that nice motion blur effect whenever you zoom in and zoom out. much cooler that way. I'll just do a quick render so we can see what it looks like smooth. 